Okay, let's continue. So, place of the questions over here. Basically, is the chain rule. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of the substitution technique for the chain rule. I just go straight in. Um, the idea being you identify what the outside and the inside function is. So, uh, for me, if you have a function that has an outside part and an inside part, the chain rule is you differentiate the outside and you multiply by the inside derivative. This is comparable to what we were doing last time where this first piece is like dy du and this second piece is like du dx. So there's no need for fancy substitutions once you get accustomed to and comfortable to directly differentiating with the chain rule. Um, let me show you. So in 228, power 4, differentiate that. So that's bring down the power, reduce the power by 1, and multiply by the inside derivative, which is like the du dx. So that would be 6x plus 3. 229, uh, bring down the power, because it's power minus 2. Reduce the power by 1, and multiply by the inside derivative the u derivative. 230, bring down the power, reduce the power by 1, and uh, multiply by the inside derivative, which is the derivative of cos pi x, which requires the chain rule again. So differentiate the outside function, so that'd be minus sine pi x, and then multiply by the derivative of pi x, so that's pi. 231, and again, I think this is a poor choice of questions for them. If I was given students questions, I wouldn't ask pi at this stage because then you have a double chain rule. So, yeah, not nice. 231. I don't like this one, by the way. Uh, 231. Bring down the power. Reduce the power by 1 again. And then multiply by the inside derivative. 6x squared minus 2x plus 6. 232. I think I would write that as sine power minus 2x. So that's uh, bring down the power, reduce the power by 1, and multiply by the derivative of sine, which is cos. 233. Bring down the power, reduce the power by 1, and multiply by the inside derivative, which is sex squared plus cos x. 234, product rule, differentiate the first piece, that's 2x cos power 4x, plus x squared, the derivative of cos power 4, chain rule, differentiate the outside, which is power 4, bring the power down, reduce the power by 1, and multiply by the inside derivative, which is minus sine x. 235, a chain rule, chain rule. Differentiate the outside, sine becomes cos. And then differentiate the inside. But that's another chain rule. Differentiate the outside, cos becomes minus sine. And then differentiate the inside, so that's 7. 236. Oh, I assume that's pi x squared. Like in a bracket. Oh, Stephen, you have to learn your sec derivative. Sec is 1 over cos. So the derivative of 1 over cos is the bottom squared, bottom times root of the top, minus the top times root of the bottom. So it's sine over cos squared. So that's sine times sec squared. Okay. So here, uh, bring down the power. Reduce the power by 1. Multiply by the inside derivative. 6 is gone. And sec becomes sine pi x squared. Sec squared pi x squared. Multiplied by the inside derivative, which is 2 pi x. 237. Uh, cotan, let's get the derivative here. 
cotan is cos over sine, so its derivative would be sine squared. Bottom times derivative to the top minus the, uh, the top times derivative to the bottom. So that would be minus 1 cosec squared. So minus cosec squared. Okay. So that would be 3 cotan squared. 4x plus 1. And then derivative of cotan. It's another chain rule. So that's cotan is uh, minus cosec squared. 4x plus 1, and then the derivative of 4x plus 1 is 4. Well, the answer is at the back, so you can check that one for sure. Um, starting from 228 in exercise 3. Two, eight, so 229. Oh yeah, no, that okay. Oh, they didn't simplify. Oh, they did simplify this time. Well, that's correct. Um, but this time they didn't simplify. Two, three, one. Yeah, that looks correct as well. Uh, two, three, three. Yep, yeah, that looks fine as well. 235, cos, cos, sine. Cos, cos, sine. Cos of cos and then times the sine. Um, and they, uh, they moved the minus into the front, but that's fine. And then 237, 12 cot squared, cos x squared. Twelve with a minus, yeah, with a minus, cotan squared, cos x squared, yeah, yeah, that looks right. Okay, so you know that's that's all right. Um, oops, okay, let's see, go back up here. Okay. Right. You know what? Let's keep going up to the tech questions. That would make a good place to stop, wouldn't it? Um, because then it's kind of, well, it goes back to non-tech here. But I think that would be a natural stopping point. Okay, so for two, three, eight, um, f derivative of one is four, and dy dx is ten, for x is one. Find f one. Interesting. Y equals f x cubed. So dy dx will be three f x squared times f derivative here dy dx is 10 when x is 1 so that's 3 f1 squared f dash 1 but f dash 1 is 4 so 10 equals 12 f1 squared so f1 would be root 10 over 12. So that's root 5 over 6. Okay. Uh, 239. dy dx would equal 4 fx plus 5x squared power 4 times f dash x plus 10x. And dy dx is 3 when x is minus 1. So that's f 4 times f of minus 1, which is minus 4. 
plus 5 times minus 1 squared, power 4. And then there's f dash minus 1. Uh, which is, oh, that's what we're looking for, f dash minus 1, minus 10. I hope I did that right. So, okay, let's see. 5 minus 4 is 1, so that's gone. So it's 3 over 4 plus 10, it looks like, is f dash minus 1. So that would mean f dash minus 1, uh, 43 over 4. Let's check the answer. Ten and three quarters. <gasps> Ten and three quarters is indeed forty three over four. And two forty. Okay. Y equals f of u plus 3x squared dy dx equals 2f of u plus 3x power 1 times I'm not sure what to be making. Oh, they, they give us the u here. Okay, so this here would be, uh, we'd like this to be f dx, but we'll have to go with df du times du dx, which is 3x squared minus 2 uh, plus 3. So dy dx equals 18, 2, um, f of u. Now, when x is 2, this will be 8 minus 4, which is 4. So, so when x is 2, the u is 4. So this becomes f of 4, which is 6. Plus 3 times 2, which is 6. Now, the f du. Uh, interesting. Interesting. So I'm wondering, should I go back to saying that this is the F D X? The F D X plus three. That would be F dash. Ooh, this one's a bit tricky now. I want to get this one right. That would be, I think that would be 4 plus 3. Because uh, you have here the F, the X. But F depends on U and U depends on X. So you can differentiate f with respect to x. Oh, I think this is right. Oh, but it's a little messy. I'm just not confident I should be I should I should be multiplying this by uh, the derivative here. They want the f the x. I think I'm going to go with it. 18 divided by 2 is 9. Oh, and divided by 12 as well. And then minus 3. So, ooh. So therefore, f dash 4, I hope, is minus 9 over 4. Now, is there any way I can confirm this? I wonder. Hmm. Um, I need. I could, you know, I'm very curious. I want to test. I want to test two forty out before I go. 
And the way I'm going to test it out is by putting in a function for four consistent with the numbers in the question. So let's just try it out. If I was to say, I need a function, I could make it linear, ax plus b, so f of um, 4 would be 4x, uh, 4a plus b, and that's supposed to equal 6, and then the derivative f dash x, that's equal to a, I see, I feel like I'm, I might have done something wrong with my answer for 240. Uh, f dash a, and that had, oh, we don't know. We don't know, do we? No, okay. Okay. What if I was just to say, f of x is equal to 4 always. So that would be consistent with that. Oh, but we need the dy dx to be 18. Okay. I see. Okay. So dy, okay, I get it now. Maybe, maybe actually I could use the software to figure this out. dy dx that's equal to 2 times, and if we just take this to be linear, a plus bx, we'll say, plus, yeah, okay, do you know what, I'll use the software. I'm really curious, really, really curious. Well, let's check the other answers, actually. I only have the answer for two. Oh, I've already checked that one. Okay. I'm really curious to check this one here. Right. So we'll have a a plus b x. A plus BX plus 3X squared. A plus BX plus 3X squared. Okay. And if I differentiate that and sub in 2, and that should equal 18. Okay. Now, um, I also need f of 4 to be 6. So if I sub in 4 here, I should get 6. So now I want to solve two equations, uh, the one on line 5 and the one on line 6 for a and b. Oh, can I not solve it? Interesting. It's indeterminate, is it? Hmm. Hmm. So I guess I can't fake it. I can't. I can't put in, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Interesting. So, okay. 
feel like I could do something here. If I sub in for A, minus square root 6, minus 12, minus 4B. Ah, I lost the equals 18, did I? Uh, what, why did I sub it into line 9? That's getting a bit messy now. Given up on it. Okay, I hope 240 is right. I just have bad feelings about the F 4 part. Um, I just, I, I wish I could say I'm 100% on 240, but I'm not. I just have bad, bad vibes about this guy here, this boyo here. Well, maybe if you're watching this, you can either reassure me or correct me. <laughs> Both would be greatly appreciated in the comments. All right. Thanks for watching. So, and I'll see you all next time.